Hey guys, what is up? It's your pal Dave from notesandvolts.com and today we're going to learn how to make these awesome custom face plates for your next synth or electronic projects using circuit boards from JLC PCB. So if you've been following my channel, you know I'm always looking at ways to improve my enclosures and make my projects look more professional. So I got the idea to make the front panel out of a circuit board because you can get custom silk screen done on a circuit board. You can get custom hole sizes, drills, cutouts, everything you want very simply and it's all very precise. I looked at the JLC PCB website and I noticed they had black solder mask boards and that just looks perfect. So this is what I came up with and you can see it looks great. And the circuit board for the project is actually attached to the back with some metal standoffs and that's about it. It really came out better than I expected. So today we're going to look at how I came up with this and how you can make your own. So one of my main goals with this project was to keep the cost as low as possible. So we're going to use all free or free license software. You're going to need three programs to do this tutorial. First, you're going to need Fusion 360 by Autodesk. Now this is a full featured professional program that usually has a quite a high price tag to it but they are nice enough to have a hobbyist license so if you're using it for your own use or not making a ton of money from it then you can apply for the hobbyist license and get the full software for free which is awesome because it is great software for the graphics we're going to use a free vector drawing program called Inkscape so Inkscape is very similar to Adobe Illustrator, if you're familiar with that, but it's free and open source. And I think it's a great piece of software and it's gonna handle our job nicely. Finally, to make the circuit board, we're gonna use KiCad, which is another free open source software that is used to design circuit boards. I really like KiCad and I use it for all my projects, so I highly recommend it. So download those three pieces of software and we can get started. But first of all, I got to mention that JLC PCB was kind enough to sponsor this whole video. So let's give them a shout out. JLC PCB has become my go-to circuit board supplier, not only for their high quality boards and fast shipping, but for their incredible five boards for $2 prototyping deal. And now JLC PCB also provides a surface mount technology assembly service. Choose from over 30,000 components and get your board professionally manufactured with a quick turnaround and great price. So for all your circuit board needs, large and small, make sure you visit jlcpcb.com. All right, so let's get started. The first program we're going to need is Fusion 360. And here's where we're gonna actually design our panel and the dimensions and how everything's gonna be laid out. So you wanna open up a new blank project. And the first thing we need to do is look at this little menu on the side here. Right now, we're in the top level of the menu. So everything we do is going to be saved under this. And that's gonna be important in a sec. But first of all, we want to go to document settings and click the little arrow. And now you'll see the units that we're currently working in. So I'm gonna work in inches, just, it's a, just a personal preference because all my machines are calibrated in inches, so it just helps me, but you're free to work in whatever units you want. To change the units, go to this little icon, change active units, and you'll get this little pop-up and you can just select inches, millimeters, feet, centimeters, whatever you want. But we're gonna use inches to start. And I'm gonna show you a little trick to add metric in there anyways, so don't worry about that. First of all, we're going to need to create a new component. 
So to make a new component, we'll just click this top level here and we'll right click on it and just click new component. And there's our new component. Now this little dot here beside the, uh, the name tells me that this is the co component we're currently working in. So if I went and clicked our top one, now we're working in the, the top component. So it's going to affect all the sub components below it. You don't want to do that. Make a new component for each separate part of your project. So we'll click that to make sure it's selected. Now I'm going to name this. So just click on the name and we'll call it faceplate. Because why not? There you go. Now just make sure the dot is beside your faceplate component and we're ready to go. And if you want to see what's in your component, just click the arrow. And right now there's nothing there because we haven't done anything, but that's where all the stuff we do in faceplate will show up. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a sketch for our new faceplate. So to do that, go up here and click on create sketch. Now, it's asking me where I want to create my sketch. Which, which plane do I want to create it on? Here's the top plane. And obviously, if we're looking at the project from the top, our faceplate is going to be the topmost thing. So let's put it on the top plane, which is this one here. And there we go. We kind of zoom in on that plane. Now, the thing I want to create is I'm going to create a small little board with holes for four potentiometers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Create. And I'm going to create a little guide to help me place my potentiometers. So I've decided all my potentiometers are going to be an inch apart. So let's go to rectangle and let's click center rectangle. Now, I don't want this to be an actual thing. I just want this rectangle to be a guide to help me place actual parts on my sketch. So let's click on the construction icon. So that means our lines won't be real lines, they'll be construction lines, which will make sense in a sec, hopefully. So we'll place the cursor right in the center and you'll see it will snap right to the center. And we'll just start dragging it out. Now you see there's two little boxes on the side and that's my dimension. So I can type in the actual dimensions I want. So it's easier than kind of dragging it and trying to get it exact, we'll just type in. So I'll just type one for the vertical, and then I'll hit the tab key, and that will go to the horizontal, and then I'll type one again. And there you go, there's a one inch by one inch square, and I'll hit return to confirm. And there's our little square. Now you notice the lines are dotted because they are not actual lines, they are construction lines. They are for or uh, helping to guide you only. So I'm going to turn construction off. And now I'm going to create some real things. So we'll go to circle, or we'll go to create, and we'll go to circle, and then we'll go center diameter circle. Now, I can just go to the corner of the square, and it will snap right to the corner, and then I'll click, and I can drag out a circle. Now, I'm going to say that for this project, my potentiometers require a seven millimeter hole. And you may be saying, but wait, we're in inches. How do I do seven millimeters? Do I need to change the, the drawing to millimeters? No, you don't. There's a real simple trick. Just type seven and then mm for millimeters. And it will know exactly what you're trying to do. So there's a seven millimeter diameter circle and then hit enter. And there you go. So you notice the, the actual measurement came out in inches because we are working in inches. But trust me, this is a seven millimeter circle. And then I'll just create four more of those in each of the corners. So another centered diameter. And seven mm. And the hotkey for a centered diameter circle is just C. So just hit C on the keyboard. 7 mm, there we go. And one more time. And there you go. So we got our circles. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to create some 
some corner holes for screws so I can actually attach the face plate to the rest of my project. So we'll do the same kind of thing. We'll go create, actually, before we do that, we'll go uh, to construction. We'll make another construction box. We'll create rectangle, center rectangle, right in the center. We're referencing everything off the center point here. And let's just drag it out. So what, let's, uh, how about two inches square? That sounds good. We'll go two inches, tab, two inches on the bottom, enter. There we go. Now we'll do the same thing. We'll uh, hit, I'm going to hit the C key to get a center diameter circle. Go to the corner of our box and drag it out. Now, the hardware I'm going to use for this is three millimeter screws or M3 screws, which is a very common dimension for board hardware. Now, here's a little piece of advice, actually a very good piece of advice. If you're using three millimeter screws, you may think I need a three millimeter hole, but that's not the case. A three millimeter hole is going to be very tight fit and you're probably going to have to use a screwdriver and really torque it in. It's not going to be a pleasant experience. So our general rule of thumb that I always follow is I like to oversize my holes by 0.2 millimeters. So instead of a three millimeter hole, we'll go 3.2 millimeters. And you'll find that will make the screws slide in like butter. And let's just do that on all the corners. So 3.2 millimeters, 3.2 millimeters. All right, and one more. Okay, so there is our hole. And actually, I forgot to turn off the construction. So I see these are dotted. That's not what we want. So I'll select it. And if you hold shift, you can select multiple things. So you can convert something from a construction to real or vice versa. Now we'll go to the construction icon and boom, now they're real things. So if it's solid, it's an actual thing. If it's dotted, it's a construction line just for dimensions only. Now, one thing we want to keep in mind, this is our screw hole, but the head of the screw is also going to have a size. So we want to take that into account. So when I create my overall board shape, uh, it's not going to uh, be too small or the screws won't hang over the edge of the board. So let's take a look at that. So here is a box of, of screws and this is the kind of screw I'm going to use. It's, it's kind of a fancy, a fancy hex head, nice button head screw. Let's take a quick measurement of the outer diameter. And it's just, it's just over five, probably like 5.3 millimeters. So just to uh, be safe, we'll, we'll call it 5.5, five and a half. So I'll turn on my construction line again. And I'm going to create some guide circles just so I can get a sense of how big. I'm only going to do one. So we'll go 5.5 millimeters. And that's the actual, that'll be the diameter of the head of the screw. So now I can make the uh, overall border of my circuit board. So this will be the, the outer edge. So we'll do our center rectangle again, make sure construction's off because I want this to be a real thing. Go right in the center and let's see what's good. What's, what's going to give us enough clearance? So 2.3, 2.4. Yeah, and it seems like I've dragged it right to the right place. So let's, let's do 2.4, shall we? Boom, there we go. To make my board even a little cooler, let's let's uh, round off these corners, just because we can. So let's what we do is we go to this tool here, which is called the the fillet tool, and we select two sides, and then we get this little thing, and then we can pull this arrow and drag it out. So what do we what what looks good? One point point one five inches looks pretty good to me. And then we hit enter, and there we go. And we'll just do that for all the other corners. And wow, 
last one. There we go. Okay, so here's our actual part. Now, a couple of things we have to do before we, uh, we finish up. We are going to use this sketch as the template for all our other steps. So we want to make sure it's as clean as possible. Unfortunately, when we export this, uh, this sketch, the construction lines are going to show up. So the other programs won't understand that this is not a real line, this is a construction line, and it's just gonna treat it like a real line, which is not what we want. So we gotta clean those out. So we'll just select them, and then hit delete key on your keyboard. And just keep doing that until you get rid of all of them. And we wanna get rid of the little construction line circle around our thing, there we go. Now we got a nice clean board. Now the actual dimensions, these things here, you don't have to worry about, right? They won't show up, uh, they're just for measurement. Now, we've got our rounded corners, everything looks good. We've cleared up all our lines. There's one last thing I wanna do. Now I'm going to make a little circle and place it right in the middle. And we can make it whatever we want. I'll just make it two millimeters, sure, why not? And there it is. Now, I don't want this circle on my actual project, but it's going to help me define the, the center point later on when we start making our board. And I think you'll see what I mean. So now our sketch is done. So let's just click Finish Sketch. And there's our thing. Now I'm gonna show you uh, how to make this an actual object in Fusion 360. So we don't need to do this for our project, but you may wanna work on this in Fusion 360 and design an enclosure around it and the whole bit. So to do that, you're gonna to have to take this from a sketch into an actual object. And that's very easy to do. Just click Extrude. And we got some settings. We want one side and we want our operation to be a new body because we don't have anything yet. So we're going to click and you see how it turns kind of blue. If I click on the hole, I'm now going to extrude this hole, which is not what we want. So I want to make sure I'm on the body. And when I click it, you notice it all turns blue. So everything that is blue is going to be affected by this operation. Now, if I move the, the, view a little bit, you'll see what's happening. We're gonna grab this arrow and pull it up. And oh, look at that, we've got a solid object now. Of course, this is too thick. The circuit board material I use is 1.6 millimeters thick. So we'll use our metric trick again, 1.6 mm. And there you go, and then we'll just click enter. And we have a solid object. Like I said, we don't need to do that, but it's good to know how to do. So now what we're going to do is we're going to export the sketch we made earlier as something called a DXF file. Now, here's a little quirk you need to be aware of. We're going to import that DXF file into Inkscape to do our graphics. Inkscape expects that all DXF files will be in millimeters. Right now, we are in inches. So if I exported this right now, when I imported it in Inkscape, it's going to think my two inch board is actually two millimeters. So it's gonna give me a tiny little board, which will be ridiculous. So what we have to do is tell Fusion that we're working in millimeters now. So we'll go back to our units tab, click on the change active units, and pull the drop down and select millimeters, and then click OK. So now we're in millimeters. So now when I export my file, it will be in millimeters and Inkscape will be happy. To export our, our sketch, it's very simple. If your sketch isn't visible, just click the arrow under faceplate and then click the second arrow under sketch. And there's our actual sketch. If you wanna keep working on it, you know, double click the sketch icon and we're back in our sketch. You can keep working on it. And then when you're done, click finish sketch, but we're finished, we don't need it anymore. So I'll, I'll click on my sketch 
and then I'll right click on my sketch and then I'll go to save as DXF. And we'll come up with a name, find a nice folder for it and we'll just call this, uh, what do you wanna call it? YouTube face plate, how about that? That sounds good. And then click save and we're done. So now you can exit out of Fusion 360. You notice it's gonna ask me, do I wanna save? If you wanna keep working on this, click save. If you don't, just click don't save. But I would probably save it because you may wanna come back to it. All right, so let's go to the next step. We're ready to create the actual silkscreen graphics for our faceplate. Now, I am not a graphics artist by any means. So I came up with some sample graphics on the bottom here, and it was very difficult for me and it gave me a headache, but I came up with this. And if you have any graphic experience, you're gonna do great in this program. The, to teach you how to do graphic design is a little outside what we can do in this tutorial. So I would look up some Inkscape tutorials, some uh, graphics design, and you can, with a little tweaking, come up with something good, even if you're a total beginner. So the first thing we have to do is we're going to import our DXF file that we made in Fusion. And what I'll do is I'll create a new layer for this. So if I go to my Layers tab, you notice uh, I've got Layer 1 here. So these graphics are on Layer 1. Why don't I rename it to something about Silk screen and now I'll create a new layer. I'll click this little plus icon and new layer. How about below current and we'll call it outline. All right, now we go to the file menu and we're going to import. Now we'll go to our folder that we saved our DXF file in and we'll find it. What do I call it? YouTube faceplate, YT faceplate. Click on it, okay. Now I'm gonna get a little pop-up. We wanna make sure that, you wanna make sure that use automatic scaling is unchecked and you wanna make sure that the manual scale factor is set to one. And that will give us a correct size for our DXF file. So let's click okay. And there it is. And if I kind of grab it, I can move it around. And this should be on our outline layer. So if I click the little eyeball, then that's gone. If I click the silk screen eyeball, that's gone. So that's how you can hide or show the different layers. Also, if you click the little lock, that means this is now locked and you can't select it or you can't do anything to it. So if you find you can't uh, do anything to a layer, make sure that it's not locked. Now, we're gonna want to position things um, kind of a little more precisely. So if you go to Object and Align and Distribute, that's gonna help us position things more precisely. I want this outline to be directly in the center of the page and I'll make that re my reference point. So I'll select my object and I'm going to move it in relation to the page. So make sure you select page. Now we're gonna use these two little guys here. So this is a center on vertical axis and you see it's centered between these two page borders now. And then we'll center the horizontal axis. And there you go, it's right dead center on our page. Now let's click to our silk screen layer. So we're gonna influence that layer. And now I want to move these graphics directly over the holes uh, on my outline. So if I select the graphics, notice right now it's just selecting the, the lines. And then if I select here, I'm selecting the text but I want these to move as, a, as one unit. So I'll select that, then I'll shift and select the, uh, the letters. And if I right click on it and go to group, now you can see the selection is all of this and it's gonna move as one unit, which is very handy. So let's do that with all these guys. So I'll make a second group for this. So 
So let's grab this group and we're going to move it on top of our hole. Now, unfortunately, there's, there's no real good center handle in this, so I can't snap it to the center of this, but I'm going to do it kind of by eye. And to make it easier so I don't select my uh, uh, outline, I'm going to lock it. That way I can't move it or I can't disturb it. And to make a real precise movement, I can actually use the, the arrows on the X and Y axis. There we go. That, that looks good. Now let's grab our second, our second control. Now let's see if we can use our align and distribute uh, menu to, to be a little more clever about this one. So I'm going to select first this, this guy, the attack knob, and then I'll shift and select the decay knob. Now, in my align and distribute, I'm going to select it relative to first selected. So this means that this guy is going to move or be positioned relative to this guy. So what if I do a horizontal uh, align? And you see now it's perfectly aligned here. What if I do a vertical align? Now it's right on top. So if I select it, we know that these holes are one inch apart. So I'll select the menu and set this measurement to inches. Now if I go in my X direction, I turn this three into a four. Look at that. It knows exactly where it is and it moved it exactly to where it needs to be. Now let's, let's do our sustain knob. And we can kind of, we can do the same thing if we want. So we'll select attack, shift click sustain. Let's align it vertically, horizontally. And then let's unselect, select the, the sustain knob. And then we'll take our Y axis and we'll move it to five to four. And there you go, it moved it down one inch perfectly. Now we got one more control. Let's do something a little different with this one. So let's select this guy and then we'll shift select our release. And then I can align it vertically. So it's gonna be lined up this way. Now let's unselect, let's select sustain, let's select shift select release, and then we'll align horizontally. Oh, look at that. We got the same result with a different way. So there's lots of ways you can use these tools to precisely position your graphics. Now, finally, we want our envelope label to be somewhere. And this is the artistic part. So you're gonna use your eye, your best judgment. So how about this? We'll uh, unlock our outline so we can select it. I'll select this hole. If you double click on it, you can select inside of the group. And then I'm going to select my envelope. And then we'll go to align and distribute and we'll do a horizontal. There you go. So now this is lined up with that. Now here, let's get fancy. So we'll unselect. We're gonna set relative to page. And then I'm going to center it vertically. Because remember, our, our whole project is centered to the page. So if I center this word to the page, then it's going to be centered in our outline too. And there you have it. That looks pretty good. I like that. So I'm going to save this as YouTube faceplate graphics. Just, just because I don't want to do this again if something goes wrong. But there you go, we're basically done with our faceplate, looks good. Now we're ready to export our faceplate into something that KiCad can use. And in order to do that, we're going to have to export a PNG image. Here's a weird thing. Like every, every step in this, there's always one weird thing. So here's the weird thing with this program. You may know that PNG images can have a transparent background which is really cool and allows you to do some good stuff. But KiCad does not enjoy that at all. And it will cause you no end of problems if you export this image with a transparent background. So we have to get rid of the transparent background on this image. How do we do that? 
Go to File, go to Document Properties. You'll get a little pop-up menu. Here is the background color. If you look on the Page tab, this is our background color. Click on it, and you'll get a little, a little pop-up. Right now, see, this is the uh, alpha channel. This is our transparency. So all the other colors are set to white, which is fine. But we got to get rid of this alpha. So grab the slider and pull it all the way across. And then close it. And there you go. So now our background color is white. And that's going to save us so much grief. You're not even going to believe it. So we can close that. And we are ready to go. Now, to export our PNG, you could go to File and Export PNG Image. And that will pull up this little window here. So let's select the parts that we want to export. So we want to export this outer edge. And we want to export, actually, we want to export everything. So we'll just drag a box all the way around this. Make sure the, that your selection goes outside of the borders of everything you want to select. And there you go. So everything looks like it's selected. Now, in our menu, you want to make sure we're on selection because we only want our image to be the size of this selection, not the size of the full page or the drawing, just the size of the selection. So it's just going to be the size of this box here. And if I set units to inches, you'll probably see that, yeah, it's like width 2.4 inches. And that looks like the size we created. Our, our board was 2.4 inches. So that's good. Now, here's the important part, the DPI, the dots per inch setting. So right now it's at 300, which is pretty good. If you're, if you're doing this for web or whatever, it's going to be fine. But it's not going to be good for KiCad. So the higher I set my DPI, the more resolution or the larger the image is going to be. So for KiCad, you're going to want a big image. Trust me. So let's set this to a thousand. Now you'd be going, Dave, you're crazy. That's way too big. No, it's not. Trust me. So now we'll go to export as and we'll set a file name. So we'll just uh, name the file something. I don't know. YouTube GFX. Sounds cool. Type is PNG. Now we'll save. Did we save it? No, we didn't. We just set this. We haven't exported it yet. So that will cause you endless frustration. So make sure you click export and you'll see the little thing go. And now it's exported. So now we're done with this. We can get out of Inkscape. All right, so now we're getting into the real engineering part and we're going to open up KiCad and design the actual circuit board. So first of all, let's start. We'll go to File and create a new project. Now we just need to select a place to put it. So I'm going to select the folder that has all our other stuff and we'll make sure create new directory for the project is selected and then I'll just call this guy faceplate. PCB. How about that? And that will create our new folder. So we start off, we've got two things. We've got this little green icon. This is our circuit board de design software. And then we have this. This is our schematic capture software. And we're going to use a bit of both. Now to start, we're actually going to open our schematic capture software. Now here's another weird little thing. Like I said, every program has a weird little thing. We are going to actually make a little schematic for this board, even though we're not using any components or, or traces or anything like that. I find KiCad gets very cranky if you don't define any copper areas on your board or put no components. It just, it kind of doesn't understand what you're trying to do. And also when we upload it to the board manufacturer to get made, they may be, think you're crazy because you're not giving them any copper files, anything like that, no components, no footprints. And they'll be like, this person's lost their mind. And they may even email you and say, hey, you did your board wrong. And you're like, no, I didn't. I'm, I'm doing something artistic. Leave me alone, right? 
So let's just skip all that hassle and we'll just make a little schematic for our board. The only parts I'm going to actually define for my board are these screw holes here. So instead of just being like drilled holes through the board, I'm actually going to have them plated. And uh, I think that's kind of cool because it will make them, in my mind, a little stronger. So if you over tighten the screw, it may not crack the board like it could if you're uh, just having uh, it go straight through. So, hey, why not? And it's free. So let's do it. And it's also going to give us a uh, something to define our copper layers. So that's another benefit too. So let's let's make a little schematic just using uh, screw holes. That's a, that's a crazy concept. So we'll go to our place symbol, and then we'll just move it over, and then we'll click on the thing, and it's going to load up my entire library of stuff. So if we scroll down, we're going to want to find something called mechanical. And if we open that, notice we have a mounting hole with a pad. So we're going to select that because that's going to give us a mounting hole object and allow us to connect some stuff to it, which will be important for later. So we'll click mounting hole pad and then we'll click OK. And there's our little pad and we'll just put it somewhere. It doesn't matter where. Now you could do the same thing again, right? Click it again, do another one. It's gonna look a little messy with these labels, but it doesn't matter. This is not really that critical. And we're gonna place four, four of these objects. Now, we're going to define a copper plane. So what we'll do is we're gonna select this little symbol here. This is the place power port. And then we'll click that. And we'll go to power. And then we'll scroll down until we get a ground. So GND, that's a little ground symbol. And we'll just put that somewhere. Now we'll go to this little green line. That's going to let us connect thing, place wires. So we're actually going to wire up our, our mounting holes to our ground symbol. So there's one, pull it down, and then click. And you should get this solid line. Put it, put it on the little tab here, pull it down, and then click, drag it across, and click. And you see this little green dot? That means this is actually connected. If you don't get that green dot, it just means that the thing is passing through and not connected. So make sure that green dot is there. And we'll do the same for this guy. We'll drag it down, click, go another direction. And when I meet this uh, point here, click again. I get my little green dot, cool, pull it down, click, move it across, click. Wow, there we go, that's our entire schematic. What we need to do now is we'll go up and we'll save our board. Now we're getting into the real nitty gritty, so, so hang on. In KiCad, the schematic symbols and the footprints for those symbols, so the thing that actually appears on your circuit board are totally separate items. You have to assign one to the other. So what we have to do is we have to go to this Assign PCB Footprints to Schematic Symbols. Click it. Now it's, it's complaining. It's saying, hey, man, you didn't annotate your board. So you notice these are all H, which I guess stands for whole. So H question mark. So everything has to have a number, H1, H2, H3. We didn't do that because we're lazy. But this will do it for us. Just click Annotate. And it just went, all right, there you go. There's some numbers. Now our board is annotated and our footprint library will open up. All right, and here it is. So this is the assigned footprint tool. Here's our four components that we made, H1 to H4. And we're gonna have to assign some uh, circuit board footprints to this. So let's go down our list and you'll find one called mounting holes. Click on it and we'll get a whole slew of mounting holes. So what do we want? Well, we know the hole we defined. We're using M3 hardware. And remember I said you want to always increase your three millimeter holes by 0.2 millimeter. Well, they've done that too. So the footprint, they've made it 3.2. So here we have a 3.2 M3. If you want to see what a footprint looks like, select it and then go to this little uh, magnifying glass. 
and you'll get a pop-up window showing you what the thing actually looks like. Now what I want is one with a little piece of a bit of copper around the, the edge. So I'm going to select this one, M3 DIN 965 pad. It just rolls off the tongue. Now we'll take a look what that one looks like. And there you go. We got a little, this, uh, this yellow is the copper ring. There's our hole in the middle. Looks good. I like that one. So let's just assign that to all of our footprints. So just make sure it's selected, the top one. And the easy way to do it is just double click the thing you want and it will assign it and it will move automatically to the next one. Just double click it again. And then third time and a fourth time. And there you go. So those footprints are now assigned to these objects. Now we'll just go down to uh, apply, save schematic and continue. Click that. We've saved it. Now just click OK and we'll be out of here. Now we're ready to send this mess over to our circuit board. So how do we do that? We just click the net, generate netlist icon. And it's saying, okay, what do you want to do? I want to generate a net list. Do it. And it's going to say, where do you want to save it? Well, we'll save it in the same directory that our KiCad project is living. So we'll just go, okay, there it is. And it's going to name it for us. Save. Boom. Done. And now we can get out of this schematic software. Let's be done with this. So the next thing we'll do is we'll go to the faceplate PCB circuit board design tool, which is this green icon here. Now, the first thing we're going to do in this software is we're going to import that DXF sketch we made way, way back in uh, Fusion 360. So we go to File, we go to Import, DXF File. And then we're going to Browse. Now, one thing you want to make sure is that the graphics layer is edge cuts. Now, what is the edge cut layer? So when you send your board to be manufactured, the edge cut layer is going to tell them where to cut the board out, how to route it out. So they'll actually put it on a little CNC router thing that's going to trace the outline of the board and cut out any internal cutouts you may have. So it's different than a drill file. So drilling is just, uh, it's going to just drill straight through the board with different drill sizes. Whereas the edge cuts layer, they're actually going to mill it out. So it's a different process. So that's why it has to be separate. So we'll make sure edge cuts is selected as your layer. And then we'll browse and we'll find that uh, yt faceplate.dxf open okay and there it is wow that's pretty cool and you notice it's in yellow which is the same color as our edge cuts layer so the color of your lines is important because it will tell you that that all this stuff is actually on that layer so a good thing to keep in mind now you want to see something cool we'll just save the board go up to this little icon save it now we go to view 3D viewer and looky here. That looks like a circuit board, does it not? So now we've got our circuit board. We need to get our screw holes that we designed in the schematic into this, this project. So, how do we do that? We got to read the net list. Go up to this icon. Now we're doing this for the first time, so I don't really need to change anything. But if I was updating, if I decided later on to go back to the schematic and assign different footprints, I would need to ex keep uh, change exchange footprints to change, or it would just keep the original. So that's a little weird thing. But since we don't have anything yet, we can leave it at keep. And then we'll read the current uh, net list. It says all changes are very final so make sure you're doing the right thing we are we're professionals we know what we're doing and there we go and we can close it there is our footprints and we'll just put them off to the side and why don't we save our board just just to be certain all right now the moment you've been waiting for 
we got to get those silkscreen graphics onto our board. How do we do that? Let's close out of our PC the new file. And we're going to open a new tool. This guy, the little A, this is the import bitmap tool. Click on it. You're going to get a crazy new thing. We need to import our picture, our, our PNG file with the non transparent background that we made. So let's load that up. And there it was YouTube.gfx. And there it is. Looks very nice. Now go to the black and white picture. So this is what our original file looks like. This is what's going to actually be exported to KiCad. You notice there's a slider. So if you're using a picture with like uh, just not black and white, but with some shades of gray in it, you would have to adjust this this white threshold. If I go too far, you notice everything's gone. If I go too you know, far the other way, everything's gone. Like our image is just black and white so it's very easy for the program to pick up but if you're using something with shades of gray in it then you'd want to move that slider until you know the the darker grays aren't washed out and the whiter grays aren't disappearing so you'll find a nice point somewhere so we'll just set it right in the middle there now here's an important um checkbox this negative so that looks kind of like what we want, right? And that looks weird. But in this program, oddly enough, the white stuff is where the silk screen is going to go and the black stuff is where the silk screen will not be. So if I exported it like this, what I would get is a big white square of silk screen with black little areas that are not silk screened, which is absolutely not what we want. So we're going to hit negative. And now the white is going to be the silk screen. The black is going to be non silk screened areas. So that's exactly what we want. Make sure PCB new uh, is, is selected. That's going to create a footprint file that we can load into our circuit board software. Now, here's one more thing for real adventurous people. We want this to be on our front silk screen layer. So that means this is going to be in white silk screen. But if you are super fancy, you can make it in your front solder mask. And what's that going to do? So in this board here, you can see the white silk screen that I use to do all the graphics on this. The solder mask is actually this black substance here. And you can get a different color. So if you want to make a red board, you could do that. You can have a red solder mask, or you can have the traditional green solder mask. So it's up to you. They, they have quite a few colors. But the solder mask, you notice it's cut away where the pads are in this board. And that keeps the solder just on the pad and not flowing all over the board. So the solder mask is very important. If you select the uh, front solder mask option, instead of silk screening it on, it's actually going to cut the solder mask, just like one of these pads. So you will see the, uh, the metal underneath through the solder mask, which is a, a very neat effect. But when we make the board, I'm going to explain why you may want, not want to do that. I didn't do it for this one. I went with pure silk screen, but that is an option if you're very uh, brave and fancy. So that's, like I said, what the front solder mask would do, but we want front silk screen. So make sure front silk screen is set. Make sure it's negative like this. And you notice the resolution, it figured out that uh, our, our DPI was like a thousand. It's, it's saying 999 for some reason, but close enough. Uh, and it's given us a size in millimeters, and uh, it looks about right. So what we do is we're going to export. Okay, so it's going to ask us where we want to create the footprint library. Now, you can do it anywhere you want, but just to be fancy, let's make a new folder. And let's call it uh, YT Library or something like that. That's pretty good. And then we'll select it. 
and we'll call it, we'll give it a file name. Let's call it uh, YT GFX. Hey, sure, why not? And we'll save it. And that's it. There, there we go. We, we, we're done with this program. You can exit out. Now, let's go back to our PCB design tool. Now, we want to place a new footprint. So that, that graphic file that we just made is going to be treated like any other footprint. But what we have to do is we have to tell this program that we're using a new library that we just created. So if we go to Preferences, Manage Footprint Libraries, Project specific library. So that means like this isn't going to be available to other things I do in the future. I just want this footprint available for this specific project. So we'll go to project specific. Okay, so now we're project specific libraries. We're going to browse libraries. Where do we want to go? So let's just click our YouTube library folder. So we just need to click the folder that our footprints are in, not the individual footprints. So let's just select that. And there it goes, it's added it to our project and we can okay and exit out. Now let's go to the add footprints tool and we'll just click on the board somewhere. Now it's saying, hey, uh, wh what footprint do you want? I got like a billion of them. Which do you want? Well, let's select by browser. It's gonna pull up this, this monstrosity here. And over on the side, it's going to be all the libraries I have available. What did we call our library? YT library. So I'll click that. And in there is one footprint, our lonely YT graphics. And there it is. Look at that. That's exactly what we want. So we'll select that. And we'll just double click on the, the name. And there it is, oh my God, will you look at that? I wanna place it right over top and I could eyeball it, but I don't like eyeballing things if, I, if uh, the computer can do it for me. So let's put it off to the side and just click it. Now it's there. Now we're gonna get very fancy. So remember we made this little uh, extra hole that uh, I said would be important later? It's important now. So this is going to be our reference. So you notice I have a little hole in the center here. And I have that little hole in the center here. So if I go to my arrow tool, my selection tool, and I click on that, that little circle, look what happens, I get a center point. Now, what I want you to look at is this little setting here, DX and DY. And you notice as I move the cursor around, it's going to follow the cursor. And I got an X, Y, too. And right now they're saying the same thing. So those are my origins. That's telling me where on the drawing I am in X and Y coordinates. So let's put our cursor until we get this little cross right in the center. Once I'm there, just let go of the mouse and hit the space bar and watch DX and DY. They're now zero. So I have created a user origin. So this is a now a zero, zero point right in the center of my circle. So now let's select our board, click it, you'll see it change color. Right click. And we'll go to position, move exactly. And if I go to user origin, look what happens. Boom, right in the middle. Now, if we save this and we look at what happened, That looks pretty cool, but we have a hole here. I don't want this. I don't need this. And also we've got some uh, silk screen around the border. I don't want that. And we got some around our screw holes. I don't want that. So we're gonna have to clean that up a bit. So here's what you can do. So select your silk screen. Make sure it turns this lighter blue. Right click, go to open and footprint editor. And there you go. So the footprint editor allows you to edit the footprint, surprisingly enough. So what we can do is we can select these little things we don't want. I don't want this little center hole. 
All right, it's being a little funny, so let me just move these things out of the way. So you notice these logos and stuff, the, the name of the footprint are in gray. They're not in blue, so that means they're not going to show up. So we don't have to worry about these, even though they look kind of ugly. Let's select our little, uh, our little circle here and press the delete key. And it's gone. Bye-bye. Now we'll do the same for our screw hole circle. Bye-bye. This guy here. This dude here. This guy here. And the outside edge of our board. We can now get rid of that. And now we've got just the things we want. So to get this to update on our board, we can use this tool here, update footprint into current board. Just hit it and it's done. Even though we didn't see anything, it is done, trust me. If I wanted to save this as a, you know, an, a modified footprint, I could go to these, uh, you have to select an active library. So we go down and select our YT library. And then you could save in, save footprint in active library and that would save this new version. But I don't want to do that. I want the old version with the, the guidance holes and all that stuff. So we've, we've sent it to our board and that's all we need to do. So get, it, get out of this program. And there you go. Now our silk screen looks better. That's what we want, right? Okay, now let us do a little more. So this little hole that has served us so well up to this point is now going to have to make the ultimate sacrifice and it's going to go away. Now, if we go right in and we select it, hey, there it is. It's like, hey, how can I serve you? I've helped you so well in the past. And we're going to say, sorry, man, you have to go hit the delete key, gone. So now if I save it and look at my board, Oh yes, it looks just like we want. So we are getting there. So now the last step is we have to deal with our copper. So our silk screen is done. Our board outline is done. We just need to place these little pads and uh, deal with that. So I want this pad to take the place of this circle. I don't want both, right? Cause this is gonna tell the board manufacturer, hey, mill this circle out. And then this will tell them, hey, drill this footprint out. That, that's confusing. So we're going to get rid of this just like we did with our, our center circle. So first of all, we, can, we need to use this to place our part. So once again, click it, go right to the center, hit the space bar, set our local origin, our DX, DY to zero. Now, while it's still selected, I can hit delete and get rid of it. Select one of my footprints. It's saying, what do you want to select? Footprint, the full footprint. Right click, move exactly. User origin, bang, done. And then we'll click off just to get it unselected. And then we'll do the same to all the corners. So that was H1, let's do H2 here. There we go. Let's see what we got. That's looking pretty spiffy, is it not? And one thing you can notice, notice how there's no copper in these holes here, but there is copper in these holes. Our screw holes are copper reinforced. So that's pretty cool. Now, are we done? Uh, not quite. So you notice these lines here. These are called rat's nest lines. And they're saying these things aren't connected to together. They're supposed to be all connected to some sort of ground, but they're not connected. They're just floating out in space. So how are we going to connect it to ground? Well, what we have to do is we have to use this tool here. Add filled zones. Click it. You'll get this cursor. We're gonna find roughly the corner of our board. You don't have to be 100% exact. Just kind of find it where it's intersecting those two lines. Click it, it's gonna come up with this menu. 
it's going to say, what do you want to do? This is going to be on the front copper layer, so the top side of the board, which net? So we made that ground. Remember we tied all our footprints to ground, right? That, that's called a net. So all those points should be connected together. So we'll select the ground net. Now a couple of new things we'll do. We're going to select pad connection, thermal relief. So that's a little trick where the pad will have, instead of being directly connected to the copper, will have little arms that kind of connect. And that makes it easy to solder because the heat is not going to transfer to that big sheet of copper. It's going to stay on the pad a little more. But we're not doing that. We want it to look nice. We don't want it to, we're not soldering anything with this. So let's turn that to solid. And that is going to make our, our screw holes directly attached to the copper plate and it will look nice. So like I said, this, this is not a functioning circuit board. This is an artistic piece. Now we can also set this uh, clearance. So that's how uh, much space will be left around our circuit board. Um, we want a little less. Let's go with like 0.2. So now we'll just start dragging a line around this little board outline. And like I said, it doesn't have to be precisely this has to be close to where we want. I'll kind of find the edge of this board. And then we'll, I'll click and I'll start dragging down. Now you notice it's making a little red square over things. Let's just drag this right down to the bottom. And we'll drag it along the bottom here. And then finally we'll drag it up to the top. And we'll make sure it meets the original point where we started. And once we do that, notice it turns into these hash marks. Now, what we can do is go back to that tool, right click on the screen and go to zones, fill all. Now it didn't seem to do anything, but let's look at what it actually did. So we'll save our board and we'll go up to view 3D viewer. Now, we can't really see because the silk screen is kind of covering the copper, but let's go to preferences, display options, and for a sec, we'll get rid of the solder mask layers. And now we can see the actual copper, and that looks pretty cool. So you see, we got a copper layer. There's a little, uh, that's our clearance around our holes, right? But if we look at the back, hey, what's going on in the back? We have no copper on the back. So what we can do is we'll, uh, we'll select this little red hash, click on it, and we'll go to zones. And then we'll go to duplicate zone onto layer. And then we'll select back copper, ground. All settings are the same, solid, 0.2 clearance, OK. And once again, we'll uh, we'll select the zone tool. Well, here's actually here's another way you can fill your zones. So if you go to this little bug here, this is the design rules check. Click on that, and then start DRC design rules check. And it's going to check. There's really nothing going on this board, so there can't be really any mistakes we're breaking. But the first thing it will do is it will refill all zones. So that will do that for us. And now if we save. And we go 3D viewer. Look, the back is all coppered too. So we've got copper on the front and the back. And let's turn our silk screen back, or sorry, our solder mask back on. Display options, show solder mask. And that is basically it. So why did I decide to um, add? the copper layers to the board. Well, there was two reasons I did that. So the first thing is I wanted the board to be stronger. If we have those copper layers on the top and the bottom, that's gonna give us two layers of copper plus the silicon board material in the middle, to which to my mind is going to be stronger and beefier than just having the, the board material itself. That was my first reason. 
The second reason is that sometimes the the under the the board material under the copper will have a part number or a manufacturer symbol kind of marked randomly around the board. And depending on where they cut it, you might be able to see one of those marks under the solder mask, which would just make me so sad. So by having that solid copper layer on the top and the bottom, we also we not only get strength, but we make sure we don't get any blemishes on the board underneath showing through our solder mask and and ruining the appearance of our lovely boards here. Now let me show you one more trick before we finish. So remember we said our screw head is roughly around 5.2 millimeters or something like that. So what if I wanted to use like black anodized screw? I didn't want to see any sort of ring of copper kind of poking out from underneath the screw. So I want to make sure this ring of copper is actually smaller than the head of the screw. So if I select this, it's saying, hey, what do you want to select? So anytime there's multiple things, it will ask you what exactly you want to select. Let's select the pad. All right, now we'll right click and we'll select properties. That's going to bring up our pad properties. Now look at the size of our pad right now. It's 5.6 millimeters, which is slightly larger than the head of the screw that we're going to use. So let's turn that to five millimeters. We'll just get rid of the, and they also shrunk down a bit. And I'll go, okay. And there you go, it's a little smaller than the rest. And that way, when I put my screw in, it's going to not show over the edges of the screw. Now I wanna do that to all the others, so I could do the same thing, but here's a little trick, right click, Go to pad, copy pad properties, click. All right, now go to this next pad, select the pad, go down to the pad menu, and then apply pad properties. And now it's exactly the same as its brother. And we'll do the same thing here. We'll click on that. Pads, apply pad properties, done. And we'll clarify pad, pads, apply pad properties. There you go. Now notice what's happening. It's we've got our lines back because it's saying, hey man, these things are too small now. They're not attached to this copper fill that you just made. Well, that's easy to fix. We just need to refill our layers. So we'll do our, our, our little trick here and we'll click the design rules check, start design rules check. It refills all the things, and now the lines are gone. And one last check, we'll save our board and we'll admire its beauty. And there you go. Oh, one th last thing. Hey, notice we got our board, our whole part numbers in the silk screen. Oh, that would be embarrassing. That's why it's always good to view your boards in actual 3D so you can see exactly what's happening. So let's go, let's select our little number here. Go to properties. Right now it's visible. Let's set it to invisible. Notice it's now gray, it's no longer blue. So that means, hey, it's not on the actual layer. So let's do the same with H1. Properties, invisible. And we'll just do it with all of these guys. There we go. Okay, now let's resave the board and let's view it. And it is perfect. Look at that. A perfect job. Good job, everyone. Now, if you want to be real fancy, you can uh, go to this little cube here and you can render it. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Now you can uh, screen capture that and send it to your grandma and say, look what I made. It's beautiful. So there you go. That's how you design the board. We went from start to finish. Now we have our finished board ready to go.
The last step is we need to get it manufactured. All right, so now all the hard work is done and our board looks great. So now we're ready to send it off to be manufactured. So in order to do that, we are going to open up our board in the PCB new design software in KiCad. And we are going to go to file and then select plot. And this is going to bring a whole bunch of options up. This is going to actually make the Gerber files that are going to tell the board manufacturer what we want to do, how to do the silk screen, how to drill the holes, how to do the edge cuts, the whole bit. So we want to make sure that our front and back copper are selected. Front and back paste are selected. Our front and back silk screen are selected. Our front and back solder mask are selected. And our edge cuts are selected. So you don't have to really do anything else. All these should be, all these other settings should be fine. We need to um, define our output directory. So click on the folder. We're in our KiCad folder right now. I like to make a new folder and call it Gerber's or something. That kind of keeps all the files from mixing in with all your other files and stuff like that. So let's double click the Gerber's folders, Gerber's select folder. Uh, that's fine. Do you want to use relative path? Yes. So Gerber's is our output folder. So it's going to create a different file for each of these check marks. So there's going to be a lot of files. So let's just go to plot. And there you go. All those files were created. The next thing we have to do is we have to generate our drill files. So for our edge holes where the uh, those drill footprints are, we have to generate a separate set of drill files. Go to generate drill files. Same output directory, Gerber's, everything else looks pretty good. Generate drill file, go. And there's our, our drill files. It gave us two. One is called plated through holes. One is non-plated through holes. Uh, all our through holes are plated because remember they have copper in them. So uh, this will be a blank file, but that's okay. Doesn't matter. And we are done with KiCad for now. Now, what you want to do is bring up your Windows file browser and find your KiCad directory where we made our Gerber's folder and go into the Gerber's folder. And there's all our lovely files, select them all, and then right click and go to send to compressed zip folder. And it made one and uh, we'll just call this whatever you want, faceplate PCB, dot zip. Now let's go visit our friends at jlcpcb.com. And when you reach the front page, you're going to find this uh, really fantastic quote tool. So click on quote now, and we're going to get to our quote page. So the first thing we're going to do is upload our board by clicking the add your Gerber file button. So now we'll get a window and we're going to want to go to our Gerber location and get that zip file we made and open it. It's uploading. There it goes. And there is our lovely file. Now, here's the fun part. We get to select our options. So right now, we're in a green solder mask, which may be what you want, but not what I want. So it's a two-layer board. The dimensions are already set. We can now select our color. So the thickness we're going to leave as is, uh, 1.6. So let's go, and they've got black or green, red, yellow, blue white and black. I got to try some of those other colors one day. So let's select our black. So here it is. Our board is now in black. Now, here's an important one, surface finish. So let's explain what these different options mean. So first one is HASL, H-A-S-L with lead. Now, what does that mean? H-A-S-L stands for hot air surface level. So what they do is they dip your board in molten solder and it's going to cover all the exposed copper. 
That is very important because if your copper is exposed, as anyone who's seen copper left out in the air, you know it oxidizes like crazy very quickly. So by coating the copper in the solder, it's going to protect it. So what they do is they dip your board in solder and then they use a hot air knife to brush over the board and level off the solder and make it nice and smooth. And this is, that's what you can see here. So that's the kind of finish you get, this nice shiny silver finish. Now, okay, so that's, that's what I'm gonna select for my board because it's the cheapest option. But what's this one? Lead-free hassle ROHS. What does that mean? So it's basically the same process as this, but they're going to use lead-free solder instead of leaded solder. And then that's gonna uh, deal with this ROHS. Now what is ROHS? It means reduction of ha hazardous substances. S several countries around the world have implemented an ROHS law that they're trying to reduce the amount of e-waste and leaded solder that may end up in their landfills and what have you. So if your country is ROHS compliant, you may want to select the lead free. Now let's see what that does to the price. It adds a little bit to the price. So not, it's still very reasonable, five boards for seven bucks. But if you're worried about ROHS, then you can use that option. Now we have one more option. ENIG, ROHS. So once again, this is ROHS compliant, but what does ENIG stand for? It stands for Engineered Nickel Immersed Gold, I believe. Now this is the Cadillac of options. And let's see what it does to the price. So it goes up quite a bit. And this is what it looks like. So you get that lovely gold finish. So what they do is they actually electroplate a nickel coating over your copper to protect it from oxidizing. And then they put a gold plating on top. And you can see it looks very, very nice, but more expensive. So if, if I was doing my logo in cut solder masks, so you would see the metal beneath, I would definitely probably go with the ENIG, even though it adds uh, to the cost, it's still pretty reasonable and it's going to look very nice and it won't corrode and it won't tarnish and it's totally rohs safe but like i said for me i'm trying to do this as cheaply as possible so i'm going to select hot air surface level with lead and look at the price two dollars for five boards now there's one more important thing we have to do we go down to the remove order number so what this means is when you order your circuit boards in the factory, they're going to add a little silkscreen part number so they can track it through the factory easier. And they will just kind of pick a place that they think is out of the way to put this number. It's very tiny. But since our board is basically the faceplate of our project, I do not want to see that number on the top of my board. It's going to drive me insane. You have two options. You can either specify a location. So if you specify a location, you can put it here, put it on the bottom side of the board or something. Just make it very obvious. Do not put on top, put on the bottom. But to be even more safe, I'm going to say I'm going to want to remove the order number. And if you look at the cost, that is going to add $1.50 to my board total. But that is going to guarantee that I'm not getting a, a part number on my board anywhere. The last thing we could do if we want is go to the Gerber viewer and actually see all our parts and check our board, make sure it's all good. Now, the last thing we need to decide is the shipping. Now, unfortunately, there's always the shipping cost. So you can just do regular registered mail. And uh, it may take five to 20 business days, but it's only like $7 for shipping. Uh, you can choose a DHL, which will be very quick, two to four business days. Um, but I find when I do this, this is one I usually do because time is kind of more important to me. So um, I generally usually get hit with an extra duty charge from DHL, uh, which is kind of a drag, but it's, it's, 
you're going to get the boards in like a day or two days. So that's pretty good. You have options depending on how quickly you need your board and how much you want to spend. So to sum up, the important things you need to set is the color, select your silk screen color. You want to select your surface finish. Remember uh, the gold, if you want exposed metal on your board, then I would go with the ENIG. And you want to make sure you tell them to remove the order number or specify a location on the back side of the board. But once you're happy and everything looks good, just save it to the cart and place your order. And when you're done, you will get a box like this from our friends at JLC PCB with your boards. And this is what I got. So a nice pack of 10 black solder mass boards and they look fantastic you look at that and look you can if you zoom right in you can see the quality of that silk screen even these tiny little uh waveforms that i drew came out nice and crisp Everything looks very good. That's basically the board we designed. That's the exact graphics that I used for the one we designed today. And the logo looks good and the text all looks good. Even the tiny details look really nice. So there you go, guys. How to make a circuit board into a front panel for your next project. I hope you're inspired by this to try this on your own. And if you come up with something cool, make sure you let me know. As always, I'd like to sincerely thank my patrons on Patreon. Thank you for helping to make everything I do possible. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to Notes and Volts for more great tutorials. And I will see you very soon.